For over a year now, I've been using one single lens to capture all of my portraits. This lens is the Sigma 35mm f1.4. Now I've used a ton of different lenses, but nothing has compared to this lens right here. It's part of Sigma's art lineup, which means it's extremely sharp, has fast autofocusing, great bokeh, and the shots I get with this lens are so so good. If you follow me on Instagram or you've seen any of my work, almost everything has been shot with this lens. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over some of the pros and cons of this lens, why I think this is the best lens for portraits. But instead of staying in here, let me take you behind the scenes to one of my photo shoots where you can watch me use this lens while I talk about it. Now, before we get into it, I just want to thank my friend Will who filmed the behind the scenes for this video and for this photo shoot. He has a YouTube channel as well that I would highly recommend subscribing to so I'll leave his socials down below With that out of the way let's get into it So with any review, let's talk about the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, price. This lens comes in at $899 at B&H, which I personally think is a great price for what you get. You can get this lens for your Sony, Canon, or Nikon. This lens has a high quality feeling made of metal and has a decent amount of weight to it. It doesn't feel like it's made out of plastic or some other cheap material. Now if we compare this to the 35mm f1.4 Canon cells, there's a pretty big price difference of $1000. So that's why I threw price in the pros. One of the reasons why I love this lens so much is its wide aperture of f1.4. Because this lens is a wide angle lens with hardly any compression, we won't get as much bokeh as you get with, let's say an 85 millimeter f2.8. So having a wide aperture allows much more light into the sensor so that we're able to get that nice blurry background behind our subject. This is just something you can't really achieve with kit lenses that have higher and variable apertures. Even at the widest aperture of f1.4, this lens is extremely sharp and that's one of the reasons why I I love it. This allows me to capture all the fine details in my model's skin, like in this photo right here, which makes it perfect for skin retouching later in Photoshop. Now as you can see from these photos here, the background is apparent, it's noticeable and not completely obliterated by bokeh or compression, and that's another reason why I love it. You can capture more of the background. This all comes down to personal taste and what style you want your portraits to have, but I'm not a huge fan of the extremely blurred backgrounds you get with lenses like an 85mm or 70 200 Not saying those lenses are not great for portraits, but I like my portraits to include the environment around my model, especially when the outfit or prop matches the studio or surroundings perfectly. This is something you should consider if you're looking for a lens for your portraits. Do you want to have a lot of the background in your portraits or not? For the last pro, this lens is not too wide. What I mean by this is that it's wide enough to capture some environment in your shot, but not too wide where it'll distort your model's face when shooting close-ups. That means I don't have to change lenses when I'm going from full body shots to close-ups. Wanna do a Vogue pose? Uh, like, oh, like that thing? Yeah, <laughs> we're doing it. Now let's move on to the cons. This lens does have some quirks that haven't really affected me, but I think you should know about them before you buy it. First one being is that this lens is not weather sealed. That being said, I have used this lens in the rain and snow, so I wouldn't worry too much unless you often shoot in harsh weather or put your lenses through rough conditions. This lens also has no image stabilization, so if you don't have any stabilization on your camera, then expect shaky footage when filming without a gimbal or stabilizer. But this doesn't only affect video. With no image stabilization on your camera or lens, even something as small as clicking the shutter button can mess up your shot. So make sure to keep that shutter speed pretty high. Lastly, this lens is heavy. This hasn't ever bothered me, and to be honest, I really like the fact that it has some weight to it. It sort of justifies the price, but if you're someone who wants to put this on a gimbal, then maybe look into something else. Like I said, it's made of solid metal. I think it actually weighs more than my Canon EOS R, but not by much, and I actually enjoy it because it distributes the weight evenly throughout the entire setup. One side is not weighing down the other. With that being said, if you're a portrait photographer or you're someone 
someone looking to get into portraits or you're just looking for a good portrait lens, this is definitely one of the best lenses you can have in your kit. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this is the only lens I use to shoot my portraits. I literally bring this to a shoot and leave all my other lenses at home. Anyway, that's it for me today. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite lens is for shooting portraits. Make sure to leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell to be notified when I post a new video. And I'll see you in the next one.